Now let's talk about wetlands ecosystems. Wetland plants are adapted to take advantage of every ray of sunlight yet live a life in the water. They have ways to expose their leaves to the sun and avoid being shaded by other plants. They also have roots that can pull in water and still get air. In the picture, a cypress tree's knees are extensions of the tree's roots that project above the normal water level. They're thought to be an adaptation that allows these large trees to get more oxygen or gain a better foothold in the wetlands constantly wet soils. Plants that grow in shallow water often have roots that tightly hold onto the soil so they can grow tall to reach sunlight. Cattails, rushes, sedges, and arrowheads do this very well. Sedges and rushes have air spaces inside their leaves to transport air and make the leaves buoyant. Some plants, such as the water lily, can grow in deeper water while still remaining anchored by roots in the soil because they have very long skinny stems reaching from the leaf on the top of the water all the way down to the soil on the bottom. There are even plants that float around on the surface. The tiny duckweed has leaves with air spaces and grows in open water to avoid the shade of taller plants. Their roots are short and hang down in the nutrient-rich water. Coastal wetland plants such as mangrove and salicornia can live in water having a high salinity. These plants are called halophytes. Animals that live in wetlands are special too. Wetlands are home to many invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, fish, birds, and mammals. Predators here are adapted to find and catch their prey in wet places. The whirligig beetle's eyes focus both above and below water to help it find prey. The black neck stilts long legs and specially adapted feet allow it to walk on mud. Stilts can snatch fish and tadpoles from underwater with their long slender beaks. The frog's long spring-like legs and the turtle's shell help them escape predators. Ducks have spoon-like flattened bills that make it easy for them to strain seeds and invertebrates from shallow water. Even the fish in these shallow, wet environments have special adaptations. With their upturned eyes and mouths, Mosquito fish can slurp down mosquito larvae on the surface. Some fish species spawn in the shallow, marshy places along the shorelines of lakes and rivers. The small young fish hide from larger predators in the plant-filled shallow water wetlands. There's plenty of food for young fish in such places. The young fish remain in this cover until they grow large enough to venture out into deeper waters. Without the wetlands, these species would disappear even though there may be plenty of deep water nearby where the adult fish can live just fine. In fact, many freshwater fish and most of the important fish and invertebrates in the Gulf of Mexico are dependent on wetlands as a place for their young to feed and grow up safely. 